Shout out to Smash JT. The Gaming Awards Grift Exposed. How game journalists are crashing in on misleading promotions. Oh, man. I guess this is Super Gay Awards right over here. The video game industry has no shortage of controversies as I relearn what feels like uh, like every day. But one of the most blatant examples of profiteering comes from the Gaming Awards, spelled G-A-Y-M-I-N-G. An annual event designed to celebrate LGBTQ plus representations in gaming. Uh, yeah, I, this is crazy, man. On the surface, this might seem like a well-meaning effort to promote inclusivity, but digging deeper into their operations and pricing structure. Pricing? You have to pay to go? I thought you just, if you're gay, you go in. It's free. Wait, unless it is gate kept by you having to be LGBTQIA plus in order for you to go in, right? If you're a straight, you know, a straight cis, you know, cisgender, hetero, white man, you have to pay to go in. I don't know. This is weird. It becomes way more clear that this event is nothing more than a cash grab designed to extort ridiculous sums of money from game public. Publishers and companies in exchange for promotional exposure. You're shocked, right? I know. Supporters, Humble Games, Zynga, Out Making Games, Quarty Gamers, and NYC Gamers. I knew people who worked at Zynga. Price promotion. Let's take a closer look at the absurd amounts of gaming. Sorry, that the gaming awards charge for sponsorship opportunities. $150,000 to be a presenting partner? Ninety thousand to be an event sponsor, fifty k for sponsor a single category or be the day sponsor, fifty thousand to be an indie festival sponsor, or thirty five thousand to be labeled as a sponsor. I'm sorry, a supporter. Yo, remember um, when I watched uh, "Am I Racist"? A lot of these people use their um, identities and victimhood to make money. Uh, you know, saying how there are like people were being racist to me. Oh, I was at a school and there's these white boys that were sitting at a desk that was supposed to be mine. I'm black. This is supposed to be a black safe area. No white people allowed. And uh, that girl, in order for you to get an interview for us, fifty thousand dollars. Then that's fucking insane. So it looks like that's what they're doing here too. They're basically pushing this mindset this agenda, but it deep down to the roots of it is for grifting for money. Yo, you're an ally, right? You're a supporter, right? Don't you want to be a presenting partner? Sure. That sounds amazing. $150,000. $150,000 money though. Jeremy. Mike. <laughs> Oh, man. These prices are astronomical for what that amounts a little more than a vanity spot at a niche award show that few outside of the LGBTQ plus community and some game journalists care about. Gaying Live. Gaying Live is a three-day orgy, virtual orgy convention of queer geekery held from Friday, October 18th to Sunday, October 20th. Thank God it passed already. From AAA games to indies, anime to animation, and drag to celebrity appearances, there's truly something for everyone. That's wild. The predominantly virtual nature of the convention removes barriers around accessibility and makes sure that it is fully inclusive to everyone around the world. Inclusive to everyone but people who think differently. New for 2024, the Gaming Live will see the launch of Gaming Game Jam and Business Day Mini Conference focusing on LGBTQ plus industry topics. So I'm assuming 
Yo, this game looks good. Are there zipper tits? Are there zipper tits in the game? Um, no, there are no zipper tits in the game. Yeah, that game is not inclusive enough, right? You're, you're like, like it feels like every game that comes out now has to have some kind of LGBTQIA plus garbage, right? And most recently, like, um, you know, uh, Bluey, which is if you guys don't know, it's a kids show that's now owned by Disney. Um, they're gonna have their first trans character in Bluey. And the thing is, people are like, oh, you know, Bluey is actually, uh, you know, based off of the creator's real life and his day-to-day -day encounters. So he encountered a trans character. How is that so bad? And why shouldn't they put it in the, in the Bluey uh, animation for little kids? Because LGBTQ stuff should not be explained to little kids. That's, it's that simple. This is insane. Compared to the cost of sponsorship at more mainstream gaming events and the overpricing becomes even more apparent. The gaming awards are exploiting companies' desires to appear inclusive and socially responsible, using representation as a weapon to pressure them into paying exorbitant fees. Exorbitant fees, yes. Yeah, basically says that if you guys are an ally, if you guys want to not be called out by the LGBTQ, and if you guys don't want to be, you know, harassed and potentially bullied off the internet, uh, support our cause or we will destroy you. Right? That's basically it. This is fucking disgusting. As a person who's been working in the gaming industry for more than 10 years now, I've been working in the gaming industry for probably 14, 14 years now. And this is absolutely, absolutely disgusting. Like, why? Who gives a fuck, right? According to their pitch, uh, for about $7 to $8, uh, sorry, $7, 7000 to 8000 USD, the game developers and publishers can get the following. Regular banner advertisings on their website, social media posts promoting their game, guaranteed impressions, of 600,000 on social media and featured spots on their podcasts and streams. But the kicker, the paid articles they offer for a fee, they'll write and publish articles about your game. These articles are presented as if they are genuine editorial content, when in reality, they're nothing more than a paid advertisement. That's a pretty deceptive article, if true. Man, that's really gay. Man, home of the queer and geek culture. Look, like I said, I don't have problems with the LGBTQIA plus stuff. But if you are pushing your agenda in place of story, character, narrative-driven stuff, and it's like, that's ruining a lot of things, right? First and foremost, first and foremost, one of the coolest characters in Final Fantasy 16, right? Coolest characters in Final Fantasy 16. Um, his name is Dion. Dion is the prince, and he he has a romantic relationship with a dark fellow. I think I'm not sure if he's dark feller, but he has a romantic relationship with a guy named Terrence, and he is one of the main characters. And he is so fucking badass. He is so fucking badass. He is the fucking. He is like a Jinchuriki. He's literally a Jinchuriki for Bahamut. He is so fucking cool. He is, he, he's, a, he's a dragoon and he's Bahamut. But the thing is, when you play Final Fantasy 16, they don't push that shit in there, right? It, shows, it sort of shows that, like, you know, when he comes back, you know, after he almost dies or whatever, he he goes and like hugs Terrence and he kisses them. I'm not sure if he kisses. I, I forgot if that actually happens. But you can tell they have a relationship. But it's not like when you first meet Dion, he's like, "I'm gay." It's like, like it's badass until you see him suck a dick. Look, I don't care what people do in the privacy of their own homes, if they want to take it in the ass. You know, like Asmund Gold said, he's so straight that he can suck a dick without being gay. <laughs> Look, if Asmund Gold wants to do that, more power to him. 
Maybe that's what he's doing during his two week ban. <laughs> Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.